Good morning and welcome to Easter Sunday. I'd like to begin with a reading of a poem by retired pastor John Hansen. And I think it helps prepare us for Easter Sunday by bridging the gap between the crucifixion and the resurrection. Holy Saturday was yesterday, and this, this is an original piece that he wrote just this past week that I'd like to share with you to begin our service. I know John, uh, Pastor John, uh, from work that I've, I've done with him on the Synod Ecofaith team. Uh, Kevin, and, Kevin Strom and I both serve on that team. Holy Saturday. Friday's terror over, hope in God entombed. There was nothing to be done when death had its way. Tears and prayers intermingled in numbing grief. How was life to go on when love was buried and still? Those hoping for God's love to finally speak peace heard and felt nothing, for God's only Son lay cold and still. Hiding behind closed doors, disciples trembled in fear. Women prepared burial spices, for death is death, always. When the threat of sickness and death draws near, we also find closed doors safer and inevitable. What tomorrow will bring is uncertain and uncontrolled. Neighbors shunned, work and pay stopped, health threatened, praying for self and others to return to normalcy. It's small comfort, but it is what faith tells us is what we must do. Holy Saturday. What was God up to that forgettable day? Always and ever what God is always up to and about to do. As a caterpillar in cocoon, a seed in the ground, Jesus in the tomb. Life was about to spring from death, hope from despair. Heaven and earth will pass away, the word made flesh, never. What will tomorrow bring to us hunkered behind closed doors? Resurrection from sin and death? Health? Jobs? Relationships restored? God's love abides forever. Let heart and soul rejoice. Now a solo from Bab Strum. She sings the first three verses of Were You There for Good Friday? never gets to sing the fourth verse, so we'll begin with the fourth verse to begin our Easter Sunday by Bab Strum. Were you there when God raised him from the tomb? Were you there when God raised him from the tomb? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when God raised him from the tomb?
That, my friends, is live. That's Dave Feebigger on the organ for our, our beginning of the service. I'd like to begin by proclaiming Alleluia together, starting with the book of Revelations, chapter 19. Alleluia, for the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Alleluia is not just a word, it's a way of living. How many ways can we share with one another Alleluia? I'd like to invite us to proclaim Alleluia at the conclusion of each phrase and to live it out in our lives. I will indicate when you are to respond with Alleluia, and it'd be great if I could hear it through the virtual Zoom here, loud enough in your homes. When the bread is divided, Alleluia. When the table is set, Alleluia. When the hungry are fed, Alleluia. When the sick are healed, Alleluia. When peace is celebrated, Alleluia. When communities are brought together, Alleluia. When neighbors love each other, Alleluia. Christ is risen, Alleluia. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. I think I could hear you there. Thank you. A few announcements to begin our, our, our time together here, keep things going. I'd again like to welcome my son Noah, who's recording and monitoring the webcam and also the sound and volume. If you're having any technical issues, enter them into the chat because he's monitoring those and can respond on the spot. Rich Hogue is also monitoring the live stream at home. I want to make sure that I mention that for the first time ever, we are doing, in addition to the chat, which goes on through the service where you can talk back and forth, but it will also continue at the end of our service until, until fellowship will be via Zoom at 1045. Uh, fellowship is, Zoom is a video conference tool, and the link to this will be both on our fi Facebook private page and also on our website. There'll be a link to join the Zoom fellowship and really look forward to joining you at that time for some conversation, pour your favorite beverage, and, and continue the Easter celebration. Um, I'd like to thank Kale and Sam Hendrickson for uh, being, with, being with our service today, that uh, they're assisting ministers, they're also gonna be doing lecture and serving as acolytes. They'll be helping out with the readings and all of that. So thank you, Sam and Kale. Um, uh, some other announcements. You've got these in your, in your, uh, in the directions or correct or description. description in the description section of Zoom. There's an announcement there about the Minnesota Food Share campaign and instructions on how you can contribute to that. It has been extended till uh, the end of April, and um, this is where everything that you donate gets matched. And so we really want to, at this time of of increased need. Uh, give to food and, and hunger ministries, and Minnesota Food Share is a great way to do that. Also, the Stewardship Committee is seeking new members. Their purpose is to encourage generous and cheerful giving and of time and talent, and that's an expression of thanks for all that God has given to us. Uh, the prayer chain and the people on the public prayer chain are listed also in that description and in the announcements. Uh, that is an active list, so if you have new names you'd like to add, please contact Bab Strum, and her, uh, her name is, is, uh, is listed on there along with a phone number. Uh, also to note, we have flowers here this morning. They are in loving memory of Melvin and Allie Johnson, and Hugo and Ellen Hampspinner, and George and Audrey McNichol. The flowers we have here are a sign of spring, which is now upon us. Uh, also, there are flowers in honor of Carol Serene, Michelle Libby, and family and friends of Larry and Peggy Smith. Uh, we, we look forward to the day that we can once again gather and worship, but this virtual worship is where we are and where we're starting and so happy you're with us today. We continue worship today with a brief order of confession and forgiveness. And I'd like to note that during this, we, we make the sign of the cross and that, that sign is a mark of our baptism of being claimed and named, forgiven by God, 
There are no exceptions to that. So please join me as we join in the name of the Blessed Trinity, one God who is present, who gives life, and who calls us all into existence. Amen. Let us confess our sins. If you were to keep watch over us, our sins, O Lord, who could stand? We confess that at times we do not share in the joy of resurrection, but are caught in the worries of the world. We confess that we do not always live in the spirit of new life, but remain discontent, grumbling, often anxious. Forgive us for not sharing the good news. Forgive us when we find it more comfortable to worry and complain than to risk joy and encouragement of new life in Christ. Call us back to your ways, O God, to seek hope and reconciliation, restoration and peace. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. Receive God's assurance of pardon. Christ is risen. The stone is rolled away and the tomb is empty. Mary calls out, I have seen the Lord. We have seen Christ too in every helping hand, in every heartfelt gift, in every choice to restore life and to bring health and healing to this world. We are called to this new life, a life of forgiveness and reconciliation. You are forgiven. Know that God loves you and desires great joy for you. Walk forward on this journey of faith, knowing your brothers and sisters and God are with you. Amen. We continue with the prayer of the day. Please join me praying the prayer of the day from the Silver Insert. O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 10, 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching them by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witness to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. Not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witness, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness and sin, and forgiveness of sins through his name. As we prepare ourselves for the next part of the service, which is a sermon, uh, we have a special offering of music by the Bell Choir. They recorded uh, their piece. It's called Resurrection. Thanks to Elda Hein and the Baker household for gathering here, maintaining self-distance, uh, and uh, for, for recording this for us for, for use this morning.
appreciate having live music, even if it's recorded for, for this gathering, both live and, and, uh, and recorded. Um, thank you, Elda and, and the Baker family. Now, Easter is a tough Sunday to preach because everyone knows how the story ends. Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed, and then why don't we add an alleluia as an exclamation point. What Alleluia, what could we possibly add to that, to this story? Um, you know, you're, you're, we, can, we can shout the alleluias from our, our pajama-clad, uh, bad hair day, unless, you know, hairstylists are non-essential employees, or, or from, uh, uh, as one of, us, uh, one of us said in the chat a while back, that uh, we all know our true hair color by now, and every day is a bad hair day. Hopefully it's not a pre-coffee day for you. Um, perhaps you're on a comfy sofa or a chair watching this, or in front of your TV or computer or tablet or smartphone. However you joined us in worship this morning, I'm very, very glad. I can't see you, but you can see me, but I am so glad that you're with us this morning on this Easter Sunday. Virtually or in person, God is the glue that connects us, that holds us together as a body of Christ. Now, this past week, I enjoyed a virtual cup of coffee with longtime member, lifelong member, Helen Hendrickson. Uh, that cup of coffee was a virtual cup, uh, real in our hands, and it was over the old-fashioned phone. Uh, from her bunker, from her house where she has uh, staying safe at home, uh, where she normally hosts coffee and uh, often some wonderful baked goods, Helen put the lentiest Lent I've ever Lented in perspective. Helen has quite the perspective. She has a long view. She has an historian's perspective, a person of deep faith perspective. And just last night, as I was thinking about the words I would offer today, I asked it would, if it would be okay with her if I shared part of her conversation. Not only was it okay, she yielded some other insights and bits of wisdom for me. Uh, this has buoyed me through, as some have called it, the holiest holy week we've ever holy. These are unique times. Now she recalled her childhood when we, when we talked that first time how it seemed to her that almost everybody she knew had lost somebody to Spanish flu. This is back the 1918 Spanish flu. She was a very young girl when she was still remembering the reverberations, how the loss had stayed with them and imprinted on her as a young child and on a generation indeed. Now, today we're in historic times. We're being imprinted by this pandemic in ways that we can hardly or yet to imagine. Helen and I spoke about the anxiety that many, most of us feel. I feel it, certainly. There is this loss of control as if we ever had control. Um, I had a conversation yesterday with my brother who was at our farm and working with uh, the waterworks and making sure things were running properly. And you could just feel his blood pressure ramping up. And uh, as he said, it's a PTSD moment, uh, post-traumatic stress time. He was, he's on the front lines of a small business in Madison, a painting contractor. And it's a very difficult time to stay grounded. How do you stay grounded? I told him to get outside and walk. And that's the same advice that I followed later that same day. I've been chasing snow these past weeks as part of the tonic to lighten and gain perspective in the day. Get outside, breathe the fresh air of this beautiful area that we're in. And I've been chasing snow, and I've been finding snow. Uh, I have some people who can uh, tip me off as to where I can find it, but I've been finding enough snow even as late as yesterday afternoon, right at twilight for about a three hour ski as, uh, before, before this, as the sun was setting. Um, I got my dogs out as well. And it got me out and it got me a breath of fresh air. It's part of the same how we get grounded here because spring has indeed sprung. There's very little snow remaining. That was my last ski, I anticipate. Now Mary and the disciples heading into Holy Week 
Good Friday. They had just witnessed a very violent death, a crucifixion of Jesus. They were probably likely experienced post-traumatic stress as well. The disciples hunkered down in the upper room. Same for them. So when I was contemplating Helen's wise words to me, it was simply, we will survive this. It's not that we will live forever, but we will survive this. Helen spoke from her faith, not fear. And she said, something will help me on the next leg of my journey. Thankfully, we don't know the date or the time. And believe me, I was thankful to know that because we don't know the name of the truck that's got our number on it. Together, virtually, but sharing a cup of coffee, we were connected in so many ways that you connect with your family, friends, and neighbors. We discussed, and no, we didn't discuss, we lamented Lent, as I call it. We lamented how it's going to be harder this year. Helen shared with me what's missing. We all know it, we feel it. We would miss the gathered people before church. We would miss the silence of waiting for it all to kick off from her pew right over here with her family. She wasn't just talking about immediate family, she was talking about the family of this congregation. The flowers, the organ fanfare, the pancake breakfast, and walking out of the church afterwards to gather around the family dining room table, the big table with family. All the traditions not repeated this year in the same way. New traditions, yes, born of necessity and faith, but together we lamented. As our conversation came to a close, she left me with these wise words. She said, this is a day that the Lord has made. And then she added, make today count. I find myself repeating these words every day of Lent, especially today as I'm writing this, yesterday it was, Holy Saturday, the in-between times. But I know the end of the story. You know the end of the story. Easter is coming. It's come, it's arrived. How can we add to Alleluia? The church buildings throughout the world are mostly empty today. But we knew it all along that it's really about the people, not the steeple, as the phrase goes. Easter is not canceled. This church building, this church building sits mostly empty but so is the tomb. One of the first grim tasks for many in our world now, if you can still watch the news at all, I did this morning, is to see what work death has done. The newspaper, the newspaper and the news feeds, if you're watching them as I'm watching them on my tablet, how many lives has death taken today? It's like a ticker tape scrolling on the TV screen, a new record each day. Has anyone notable taken ill or died? Has anyone in my immediate circle become ill or died? What work has death done today? It's scrolling alongside the TV screen. It's updated minute by minute. As I thought about the gospel lesson about the story that, that Cale read for us, Mary, the first thing she did at first dawn that third day was check in on the work of death. Mary Magdalene had to do it on that first Sunday morning. Jesus of Nazareth, an itinerant rabbi who did signs and wonders and healed, certainly notable in his day. Remember the crowds that, that welcomed him just the week before in Palm Sunday and later deserted him. Some even said at the time that he was the long-awaited Messiah. I think it's important to know that Mary knew Jesus personally. 
We read that she was keeping company with Jesus' mother and aunt at the cross. So at first light, once the Sabbath was over, she was checking in on the work of death. You know what happens next. I'm reminding you of what you already know. Mary went to the tomb expecting death. We remember, just like we visit the graves of loved ones all the time. Some die of old age, some too young, some tragically, violently, senseless, senselessly. That's part of grieving, remembering, valuing. What did the Marys, and there were two of them here, expect to find at the tomb? The disciples, we know, were terrified for their safety. They were locked in the upper room, reeling from heartache, the brutal death of the one they thought would save them, the one Messiah, the, what the future would hold. They didn't know what the future would hold. Would their lives ever return to normal? Normal. That sounds familiar. We long for normal now. And so the story continues. An earthquake, an angel sitting atop a rolled away stone in front of an empty tomb, and the guards out of fear shook and became like dead men. Twice in the text, first from the angel and then later from the risen Jesus, the women are told, do not be afraid. I found it interesting to say they're not told there is nothing to fear. Let's be a realist here. People are out to get them. There is for us an invisible virus that is out lurking there trying to get us. The world can be a fearful place, but we are not to be afraid because Christ is risen. You know the end of the story. It's a story worth telling for thousands of years. It's a story that has endured. It's being told all over the world today from empty churches being live streamed. As the angel said to Mary's, to the Marys, Jesus is not here. He has been raised. Then go quickly and tell the disciples he's been raised from the dead and indeed he's going ahead of you to Galilee. That's the phrase that jumped out for me today. Jesus is always ahead of us, inviting us to meet him in the Galilees and in the need of our neighbor and in the care for one another and for care of the world. Jesus is still not where we expect him to be, but rather he is still inviting us to move forward and outward in faith, still promising to meet us up ahead, still reminding us that he will always be with us even to the end of the age. And finally, God is always where we most need God to be. In the resurrection, God promises that all the harsh realities of life the hardship, struggle, loss, fear, disease, hunger, death, these realities, painful and real as they are, don't have the last word. The end of the story, we know it so well, but we need reminding. The promise is that God's light is more powerful than darkness, that God's love is stronger than hate, and that life, the life God offers through Christ, prevails over all things, even death itself. Church isn't canceled. The church is empty, but so is the tomb. Jesus has gone ahead of us, and we are left to live, live through our witness, the greatest story ever told. And then we're invited, no, we are commanded to tell the story to others, to be disciples to follow in the footsteps. Happy Easter. Amen.
I'd like to now invite Kale and Sam to come forward for the prayers. We're good. <laughs> Let us pray. Let us pray. Not just now, but always. Uplifted by the promised hope. Oh, and, and these, these, these prayers are found in your celebrate insert. And the response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer after each petition. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection. We join the people of God in all times and places, praying for the church, the world, and all those in need. God of resurrection, from the very beginning you give the church the gift of women as your witnesses, as preachers, teachers, and leaders. Open our ears to their proclamation this day and always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All your creation praises you. The earth hums, the seas pulse, the stars shine, and the galaxies whirl in glorious harmonies to honor you. Let us hear and blend our voices in the song. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The countries of the world, of the world experience disunity and conflict. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than on your rule of justice and and steadfast love. Build up all countries on the cornerstone of peace, Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. prayer. We still weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, and the dying, assuring them of your loving presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Bless the creative and the helpful service of worship leaders this day, musicians, ushers, greeters, worship assistants, preachers, readers, and all others who provide welcome and hospitality in our midst. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. You remember those who have died. Inspire us to live our lives in the resurrection, hope, and draw, draw us in, into your final days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of us this Easter. Amen. We continue now, although we may not be gathered together in a church building, now more than ever we're called to strengthen the mission and ministry of the church, one another in our community and the world. There is a secure lockbox outside the lower doors to the church. You can mail in or give your uh, offering online and also your time and your talent. So. We continue with our offering, and Sam will lead us in an offering prayer next. Let us pray. Be, be known to us, O Lord, as you are made known to Mary and, and the disciples. Receive these gifts, the offering of our lives, financial gifts, and gifts of time and talent, that we may be your risen body in the world. Amen. You call us to follow in the footsteps of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray in the, in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive God's blessing as we conclude worship 
and go forth into the world. Christ is risen. He goes before us in this world of fear and pain, joy and sorrow. We are Easter people living in a Good Friday world. Jesus has called us to bring the good news of healing and hope of redemption. We are the body of Christ, raised up for the world. Go in peace and feel the presence of the risen Lord with you and to share the good news that we have learned, that we know, the story we know so well, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for, for the ministry assistance that you've provided, Kale and Sam. Thank you so much this morning. Thank you, Babs, for the special music. I'd like to, as we conclude, uh, welcome you to stay on the chat line and continue, and also to link up with the Zoom virtual video conferencing here. You'll find the link on our website on the homepage and also on the private Facebook group. Please join that fellowship as we continue, and then we kick off the, the conclusion of our service with uh, the organ. Uh, hit it, Dave. We all here? I just was reminded uh, as things were going along, the entire gospel story is told really in the book of Acts, which is a book that we go through here. We forgot the Holy Gospel reading. I can't believe it. Kale is going, I was, I was hearing the gospel reading in the book of Acts and my mind was there. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Let me read it again here. After the Sabbath, Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. As he said, come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to him, Do not be afraid. 
Go and tell my brothers and go to Galilee. There they will see me. Here ends the gospel of the Lord. Here ends our service. David, you can continue playing. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you.